charming, intelligent, witty, incisive, funny, mild-mannered, chivalrous, the very paragon of fitness and health. None of those words describe the subject of this video roast, Richard the Dick Coughlin. So what can I tell you about Richard the Dick? Childish, emo, drama, whore, histrionic, personality disorder, twat, Coughlin. Um, quite a bit. Now how is it possible to roast someone who calls himself the Dick? And more importantly, will he ever run out of potential channel names and number combinations that allow him to slip the Dick part into the name? When can we expect to see the channel name, I reply to every Thunderfoot and Pat Condell video, the Dick 666? Yeah, Coughlin is a daily routine for me. The first thing I have to do every morning is to check out if I have to subscribe to again another backup channel. The Rob Chatter channel. That was my channel. Did you know that? It was my channel. I was the one who set it all up. I was the one who named it. Uh, I get top billing. Rob Chatter. Rob. Originally, originally, he was going to call himself Richard the Clitoris Coughlin, but he couldn't find the clit. Unfortunately, Richard couldn't deal with the fact that, that my shit was funnier. I've been, I've been watching Coughlin for, in fact, I've been watching him for so long that when I started watching Coughlin videos, Pat Condell was still funny. You know, I, I first started watching Coughlin's videos because it was about time that there was a strong gay voice on, on YouTube, um, a, a positive role model for for other gays in the community. I mean, everybody seems to think, I've got this deep held respect for this twat. I mean, what kind of respect do I owe him? I mean, seriously. The guy thinks he's funny. Well, I don't know how to point this out to you, Richard. Nobody's laughing with you. They're laughing at you. He's a huge Britney Spears fan. Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? Something wasn't right here. Coughlin 666, or is it 616? 000. Uh, let's face it, man, you've been DMCA'd and false flag and channel flopped so many times that you have more oppression and identity crisis issues to deal with than a homosexual transvestite atheist with AIDS. Wait a minute. When I first saw Richard the Dick Coughlin 666, I thought to myself, oh my, Iggy Pop has finally hit rock bottom. Supposedly the British have an obesity epidemic, but when I met you for the first time, Richard, you were so skinny that I was afraid you would slide through the little crack between the elevator and the hallway every time you stepped on it. So I kept encouraging you to eat lots of burgers and tacos. That was kind of scary too, though, because every time you ate, you looked like a snake that had just swallowed Pat Condell. I've been watching Coughlin videos since he was just a little toothpick. I mean, seriously, I've not seen anyone this painfully thin and still alive since Twiggy went on a diet. You're thinner than me, yet somehow you managed to get away with it. Nobody talks about your fucking weight. Nobody tells you to eat a fucking cookie. anti coughlin is just another way of saying, let's eat something. anti coughlin is just code for anti-anorexic. How do you even roast someone who's paler than Scouse Caspa, skinnier than Zom Gets Chris, louder than Amendum, weaker than a Brett Keen argument, and has an entire subscription base made exclusively out of his 20,000 different channels just subscribing to one another? There's no point to roast somebody like that. Coughlin attracts drama much in the same way that Nuclear Knight's ass attracts fat. He attracts drama like Thunderfoot, attracts members of the EDL, and attracts trolls like Pat Condell attracts members of the BNP. Coughlin does have his haters, but you would too if you were a Muslim sympathizer. Uh, God, we got a problem. <sighs> Damn it, Jeffrey, what now? Uh, I found Coughlin's name in the Book of Life, but he's an atheist, isn't he? And he's not going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, 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 it doesn't take omniscience to figure out that Coughlin is no atheist. But if he's not an atheist, then, then what is he? I mean, 
I'm not saying that he's a Muslim sympathizer, but I've heard that he masturbates to Amanakin's eyes. Coughlin doesn't make videos where he defends individual rights of people, particularly Muslims, because he's an Islamo sympathizer, nor is he doing it because he really gives a shit about people's individual rights. There's really two reasons that he does that, and I know this, and I'm going to share it with you. Those reasons are really simple. For one, he has a thing for Muslim chicks, and two, he named his penis Allah. Now, I'm not saying that Coughlin's a Muslim sympathizer. But he, he did try to trade several goats and a handful of chickens to Dawa Film's parents in exchange for Dawa's hand in marriage. I could have sworn I saw him ironing a burqa once. Dawa Film said that not too long ago, Coughlin showed up at his door wearing a burqa, holding a crack pipe in one hand, bottle of Mad Dog 2020 in the other hand, and a bouquet of roses clenched within his teeth. He noticed there's very many similarities between Allah and what he thought of his penis. You know, but Allah is great and all-powerful. Right there, I mean, that's what he thinks of his penis. And two, also, when Allah, if you don't believe in the greatness of Allah, that you will burn for all eternity? Well, um, he thinks that about his penis, too. It might be because of the herpes, but... Mm. It's heartbreaking, it really is. I, I I wish I could do something to help him, but there is really nothing that can be done. The only he can only help himself from this point on. So one night I'm feeling frisky and I go to a bar, and in the bar is Richard the Dick Coffin. Already I knew that this was going to be a very bad night for me. So I'm sitting there and I'm talking to a few girls, most of which had already talked to Richard. Do you have any idea how hard it is to fuck a chick after she's talked to Richard the Dick Coughlin? I mean, you're trying to fuck her, but every five minutes you have to stop and give her a hug and let her know it's going to be okay. You make Glenn Beck look emotionally stable. So eventually I do find one girl and I get her to stop crying long enough to explain to her that the world is not coming to an end because he is in our world. And I get her back to my place and we start making sweet love. <laughs> but in the middle of that sweet love making, I thought of Richard when he said, <gasps> HEATHEN! And it broke my concentration. I haven't made love to a woman in over a year. Thanks, Dick. Well, hey, I just got a parcel in the post. Look, here we go. And um, it's from Scotland, and there's only one person in Scotland who knows my um, address, and that's Richard the Dick Coughlin. I'm really excited about this because I've never gotten anything from Coughlin in the post before. There seems to be a, a card here. Isn't that pretty? I suppose I'm going to have to thank Bronwyn for that. Do you want me to be honest with you? I think Bronwyn's a front. You know, it, it, that, that has to be, you know, Bronwyn's a front. She's pretending to you to, to be your girlfriend so that you could hide your gayness. Dear Funk, as you know, I've recently settled down with a very nice girl, and as such, I won't be needing the enclosed items any longer. I thought you might be able to put them to good use. Love, the dick. But yeah, very fucking funny, Richard. We felt bad for you when you lost your hot girlfriend to a mutual friend of ours. I mean, we've all lost one like that before, haven't we? Well, not usually two men with surgically enhanced breasts uh, that likes men at least as much as women, but, but you know what I mean. And we all know that anti-Coughlin is just a code word for anti-gay. I mean, isn't that why you make so many videos on gay people? I mean, isn't that why you have such a hard on for Thunderfoot and Pat Condell and Hey Ruka? I mean, Hey Ruka, there's a guy. What can I tell you? Back in the beginning, he was like a sort of this long-haired, liberal, hippie, pinko communist. And now he's more like a short-haired, pinko, liberal, hippie communist. You know, he started, his, he started his career off as a comedian, and he was genuinely funny. These days, he's become some sort of pseudo-activist, like all hack comedians end up being. You know, when all, when all the work dries up and there's, there's not a funny bone left in them, they start, you know, trying to right the wrongs of the world, and this is where Richards end up. Seriously, I've been watching Coughlin's videos for over two years now and the main thing I get from watching Coughlin's videos is the will to live because it's good 
to see someone out there who's got it worse than me. I know things have been looking up for you though, Richard. Earlier this year, we were talking on Skype and you sounded happier than you'd been in months. You told me that you got a job as a short order cook and had just moved in with your new girlfriend. I tried to be supportive of your achievements, but I couldn't help thinking to myself, wow, that would have been really impressive if you were like 19, but come on, you're, what, 32 years old now? Keep reaching for the stars while you flip those burgers, birthday boy. Where the fuck has this been? You want some fries with that roast? I remember watching one of his old stand-up routines, uh, where he was shaved bald and wearing a giant golden romper suit, and he looked like a, an AIDS-infected crack baby. That was funny. Suction cut base for mounting on a smooth surface. Today, he isn't very funny. Um... I mean, I mean, if you look at this material now, look at this material now, it's all just bitching and moaning about racists and nationalists and the BNP and Nazis and God knows what else. It, where's the humor in that? I mean, honestly. Honestly. He thinks of himself as a comedian, but I think he's as funny as Pat Condell in an EDL rally. He used to be funny, that's the sad thing. What the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Richard has always been so lazy. I mean, all he ever does is lay around and watch TV and be on the computer on YouTube. I mean, seriously, he spends more time in bed than Q-Dragon. And we're not trying to kick you when you're down, though, Richard. Really, you've done quite well for yourself, for someone who's so incredibly bad at internet ponage that you haven't even won a single event of your own ponage Olympics, despite being completely in charge of who wins. It's feeble, I think is the word I'm looking for. Feeble. He's so desperate for attention, so desperate to be loved and ad admired and adored that he will do anything to, do, to, to, to get that. My birthday was on the 13th of October. Do you think anybody remembered that? No, it would have been nice for God that folks say, Hey everybody, it's Ashes the Raven's birthday on the 13th of October. Let's all make him a roasting video. Let's all make him a collab video saying happy birthday to him. No. No, I didn't even get that. No, you get all the fucking glory. Again. You know, when he came to the States, I spent about a half an hour trying to wash that mark off of his face. Um, and then I realized it was a mole. Mm. Sorry. Before I learned it was a mole, I thought he had a corporate shill on his face. That spot on Coughlin's face is either hepatitis A, hepatitis B, or hepatitis C. Give you a moment to think about that one. And the answer is, of course, all of the above. And the winner should have been contraception. Am I bitter? Do I sound bitter? No, I'm not bitter and I don't sound bitter. I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> we kid, though, Richard. We kid. For all your faults, flaws, errors, deficiencies, and general human inadequacies, the Internet's a better place because of you. Oh, I know. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Coughlin. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, big boy. Mm hmm Come and get me. Richard, you're the best, and I sincerely hope that we all get to see many more videos from you and that you have the best birthday ever. Hello. Happy birthday, Richard. It's a privilege to be a roaster, roasting persona of your caliber. Once again, thank you very much. Fuck you, you cunt. Have a happy birthday. It's tragic, really. I mean, he's, he's 30, 32, I think he's 32 this year. He's getting old, isn't he? Getting old. Lost it. Can't hack it anymore. <sighs> Sad, really is. Tragic.